Yeah, good evening everyone and uh, I welcome you all for the week 11 session of uh, principles of signals and systems course and in the previous week uh, I have covered some examples uh, related to DTFT <coughs> this week we'll focus on uh, discrete Fourier transform and uh, look at some of its examples in a bit detail We'll also try to use some properties and also look at some interesting properties of this DFT uh, which are handy uh, for computation purposes. So let's start first with the recap of uh, or the revision of some of the properties related to DFT. So let's start by defining what is DFT. <coughs> so suppose I have a signal XL and this is a uh, finite duration and let's say it is uh, n length okay so the dft of this signal xn is given as xk is equal to summation k running from 0 to n minus 1 xn e power minus j 2 pi k n by n and its inverse dft is given as small xn is equal to 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 xk i am sorry this is not k this is n yes and uh, xn is equal to 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 xk into e power j 2 pi k n by n and this factor e power minus j 2 pi by n <coughs> is referred as w n and uh, this is basically nth root of unity this dft shares uh, properties or shares relations with uh, some other transforms like uh, discrete fourier series so suppose i have a periodic signal x xp of n and uh, it is having a period n then we can say that <coughs> xk if uh, that signal is restricted to one period then xk is equal to n times ck <coughs> similarly this dtft for a finite duration signal is related to this dft as uh, this xk is equal to x of omega which is dtft evaluated at omega is equal to 2 pi k by n after that there were several properties of this uh, dft so the first property as usual is the linearity property and it says that if uh, so it basically says that let's say x1 of n has an endpoint dft as x1 of k and x2 of n has endpoint dft as x2 of k <coughs> then if i consider a1 x1 of n plus a2 x2 of n then this will have dft as a1 x1 k plus a2 x2 k so this is their uh, endpoint dft after that we have time shift properties so if we have x of n minus n naught and this shift is basically modulo n because uh, this x is a finite duration signal so this is this has its dft as x of k into <coughs> e power minus j 2 pi k n naught by n it introduces a phase factor Next is the conjugation property. So this x conjugate of n will have its dft as x conjugate of minus k. Now this minus k is basically minus k modulo n. So it is minus k modulo n. Then we have frequency shift property. So if I have x of k minus k naught this is also modulo n then uh, in time domain this is equal to xn into e power j 2 pi k naught n by n <coughs> then we have duality property so it says that if x 
xn small xn has dft as xk then if i consider capital xn then its dft will be given by n times x of minus n uh, x of minus k and this minus is again modulo n everything every shift and flip operation every shift flip scaling operation will always be modulo n then we have circular convolution property so if in time domain i circularly convolve two finite duration signals then this will lead to x1 k into x2 k simple simple multiplication in the time domain <coughs> sorry in the frequency domain if i have multiplication in frequency domain that is if i have x1 n into x2 n then this will have dft as 1 by n x1 k circularly convolved with x2 k and the last property that we had seen was uh, this parsevals relation so it says that if i consider energy in the time domain that is n equal to 0 to n minus 1 mod x1 uh, sorry mod xn square this will be equal to 1 by n summation k running from 0 to n minus 1 mod xk square <coughs> I hope this pro these properties are clear if there are any doubts please let me know otherwise we'll start looking at some of the examples okay so let us look at the very first example of uh, today's session so it says that I have two signals one is x1n and another is x2n and we need to find its circular convolution. Now note that in order to find circular convolution, both the signals should be of equal length. <coughs> and therefore, uh, if we look carefully here, the length of x1 is 4 and length of x2 is 3. So this is length is equal to 4 and this has length is equal to 3 in order to circularly convolve these two will append a 0 at the end of this x to n that won't change anything so <coughs> we have x1 n as 1 which is at 0 2 3 4 and let's say x to n is equal to 1 1 1 0 And what do we need to find? We need to find yn is equal to x1n circularly convolved with x2n. And the circular convolution is basically given as summation k running from 0 to n minus 1 x1k x2 of n minus k and this is modulo n. Okay, now <coughs> let's let's start solving this. So for that, what I'll do? Let me draw this k axis. This is zero, one, two, three, and uh, let's say this is my x one of k, and x one of k takes the value at zero as one. Next one of 1 is 2, 3 and 4. Now let's say we have x2 of minus k. And this is basically modulo n, uh, modulo uh, 4 operation. Here n is equal to 4. So basically it is modulo 4 operation. So, <coughs> so what do we have is we have minus k implies it is minus k modulo n so if my k is equal to 0 then 0 modulo n is 0 so this remains as it is so this 1 which is at 0 will appear here itself 
then minus 1 modulo n is basically equal to n minus 1 that is equal to 3 here if, uh, n equal to 4 so this is minus 1 is basically <coughs> 3 so this is at 3 so what we'll get here is 0 then okay to be very simple minus n modulo n the minus k modulo n is basically n minus k then this x2 of minus 2 will be equal to n minus 2 that is 2 which is equal to 1 and then what we have is again 1 here and y of 0 will be equal to point wise multiplication of these two signals and simply adding it so it is 1 plus 0 plus 3 plus 4 which comes out to be 8 <coughs> so this is my y 0 now let us consider x2 of 1 minus k okay so what do we have first is x2 of 1 x2 of 1 is okay the 1 modulo 4 is again 1 so what do we have at x2 of 1 is 1 then uh, next what we have is x2 of 0 x2 of 0 is again 1 then we have x2 of minus 1 and x2 of minus 1 is basically x2 of 4 minus 1 which is equal to 3 that is x2 of 3 and x2 of 3 is 0 so we have 0 here and this is x2 of minus 2 which is basically 4 minus 2 equal to 2 which comes out to be this value here which is equal to 1 so this is what we have <coughs> okay again then y of 1 will be equal to 1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 2 plus 0 into 3 0 plus 1 into 4 4 which comes out to be 7 okay now uh, we can observe that this 0 goes on shifting in this direction something like this this one gets shifted here this one gets shifted here so we can <coughs> have some similar thing afterwards so what do we have is x2 of 2 minus k will be now this 0 will go here that is here this one will come here this one then this one will go here that is 1 and this will go here which is 1 so what do we have is y of 2 is equal to 1 into 1 1 plus 1 into 2 2 plus 1 into 3 3 plus 0 which comes out to be 6 <coughs> and at the end what do we have is x2 of 3 minus k which is now this 0 will come at the first place this one will go here this one will go here and this one will go here so y of 3 is equal to 1 plus 2 uh, 1 into 2 is 2 then 1 into 3 plus 3 plus 4 so this comes out to be 2 plus 3 5 plus 4 9 so this is what we have so from this what we are obtaining is y of n is a four length sequence starting from 8 then it takes value 7 at 1 6 9 so this is the output of the circular convolution that we have obtained any questions at this point we need to do is in the in this question we have been asked to find four point dft of x1 n x2 n and then we need to verify the circular convolution property so uh, we have to do three things so the first one the first one is we need to find the dft of x1 n the second thing 
The second thing that we need to find is the uh, four-point DFT of x two n, and after that, at the end, we need to verify the circular convolution property of DFT. So, if we look carefully, this x one n and x two n are exactly the same things that we have obtained here, and we have found the circular convolution of this. So, what we will do is we'll find four-point DFT of x one n, four-point DFT of x two n, and then we'll <coughs> find x one k into x two k. And verify whether it is equal to the DFT of this y n. Okay, so let's start with the first part. So we'll find DFT of x one n, and we know that n is equal to four. So this W four is basically equal to e power j two pi by four. <coughs> And this is basically e power uh, with a minus sign minus j pi by two, which is equal to minus j. So this x k is equal to summation n running from zero to three. N minus one n is equal to four, so n minus one is basically three. X n into e power minus uh, w four. Okay, let me write it w four the power k n. Which I can write as n equal to zero to three x n into minus j to the power n into k. I hope till this point it is okay. So this is what we are having, and basically we are finding it for x one n. So let me just add this subscript of x one. <coughs> okay, so. This is basically a concise way of writing this uh, DFT. But what we'll do, we'll find the value for all, uh, all the four values. It is like x one zero till x one three. So what we'll do is, let's say we have x one of zero here. So this is equal to x one of zero plus x one of one into my. Uh, now this k is equal to zero. This k here is equal to zero, so this uh, minus j to the power zero reduces to one. So basically, this x one of zero is simply addition of all the four values, something like this. So what we obtain is one plus two plus three plus four, which is equal to <coughs> which is equal to ten. Then let us find x one of one. So this is equal to x one of zero now into minus j to the power zero into one plus x one of one into minus j to the power one into one plus x one of two into e into minus one to the power two into one. Plus x one of three into sorry this is j minus j to the power three into one. So this is equal to <coughs> x one of zero is one. This is this reduces to one. Then x one of one is two minus j to the power one is basically minus j. So this is minus two j. Then x two is three, and minus j square is equal to minus one. So this is equal to minus three, and x one three is equal to four, and minus j to the power three is basically equal to <coughs> less. J. So this is four j. So this reduces to minus two plus two j. Then we'll find the value of x one of two. So this is equal to x one zero into minus j to the power zero into two plus x one one. So let me just substitute these values directly. Okay, let it be x one of one into minus j to the power one into two plus x one two into Minus j to the power two into two plus x one 
थ्री इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर थ्री इंटू टू सो दिस इज इक्वल टू या दिस इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस टू इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर टू विच रिड्यूज टू माइनस वन सो दिस इज माइनस वन प्लस थ्री इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर फोर विच इज इक्वल टू जे सॉरी वन एंड दिस इज एक्स वन थ्री इज बेसिकली प्लस फोर एंड माइनस जे टू द पावर सिक्स इज अगेन माइनस वन सो दिस इज वन माइनस टू प्लस थ्री माइनस फोर विच कम्स आउट टू बी माइनस टू एंड एक्स वन ऑफ थ्री इज इक्वल टू एक्स वन जीरो इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर जीरो इंटू थ्री प्लस एक्स वन वन इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर वन इंटू थ्री प्लस एक्स वन टू इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर टू इंटू थ्री प्लस एक्स वन थ्री इंटू माइनस जे टू द पावर थ्री इंटू थ्री ओके सो नाउ दिस कम्स आउट टू बी वन दिस इज प्लस जे इंटू टू देन दिस इज इक्वल टू माइनस माइनस थ्री एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू माइनस फोर जे सो दिस रिड्यूस टू माइनस टू माइनस टू जे नाउ केयरफुली ऑब्जर्व दीज टू वैल्यूज एक्स वन ऑफ वन एंड एक्स वन ऑफ थ्री दिस वन एंड दिस वन सो वॉट टू बी ऑब्जर्व इज दिस एक्स वन ऑफ राइट डिफरेंट कलर एक्स वन ऑफ वन इज इक्वल टू एक्स वन ऑफ थ्री कॉन्जुकेट सो दिस इज बेसिकली इक्वल टू एक्स वन कॉन्जुकेट ऑफ फोर माइनस वन विच इज इक्वल टू एक्स वन कॉन्जुकेट ऑफ माइनस वन सो दिस इज बेसिकली योर टाइम फ्लिपिंग प्रॉपर्टी दैट वी आर ऑप्टेनिंग हेयर फॉर योर डी एफ टी नाउ आई कैन राइट दिस इन अ कंसाइज वे एज अ सीक्वेंस विच इज टेन कॉमा माइनस टू प्लस टू जे माइनस टू माइनस टू माइनस टू जे एंड दिस इज एट जीरो any questions for this <coughs> okay now let us okay now let us find the dft for uh, this x2 of n again we need to find four point dft so which means that i can write this x2 of n as a four length sequence something like this 1 1 1 and 0 and uh, we have x2 of k is equal to summation n running from 0 to 3 x2 of n and w4 which is was obtained as minus j so it is minus j to the power k <coughs> so we'll repeat the same thing that we had done in uh, that we have done previously so this x2 of 0 is equal to x2 of uh, 0 plus x2 of 1 plus x2 of 2 plus x2 of 3 which is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 which is equal to 3 then this capital x2 of 1 is equal to x2 of 0 into minus j to the power 0 plus x2 of 1 into minus j to the power 1 plus x2 of 2 into minus j to the power 2 which comes out to be 1 minus j minus 1 which is equal to minus j x2 of 2 is equal to x2 of 0 <coughs> into minus j to the power 0 plus x2 of 1 into minus j to the power 
2 into 1 that is 2 plus x2 of 2 into minus j to the power 2 into 2 that is 4 so this reduces to 1 <coughs> 1 minus 1 plus 1 so this comes out to be equal to 1 and x2 of 3 is equal to by simply observation we can see that it will be equal to j which is basically complex conjugate of this minus j but let us find it out for the sake of completeness so this is x2 of 0 to the power 0 plus x2 of 1 into minus j to the power 3 plus x2 of 2 into minus j to the power <coughs> 3 into 2 that is 6 so this comes out to be 1 plus j minus 1 so this comes out to be equal to j so this x2 of k this x2 of k is equal to a sequence that is 3 minus j 1 j okay now let us first find out what is so consider x1 of uh, okay, let me do it on the next page okay so let us consider x1 k is equal to 10 minus 2 plus 2 j minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 j and we have x2 of k as 3 minus j 1 and j so consider x th uh, yeah y1 of k as x1 k multiplied by x2 k so this is simply a sequence of pointwise multiplication that is this 10 this 10 will get multiplied by this 3 so we have it as 30 then this <coughs> minus 2 plus 2 j gets multiplied by minus j so this is basically equal to minus 2 so this is uh, this comes out to be basically <coughs> 2 plus 2j then this minus 2 gets multiplied by this minus 2 gets multiplied by 1 so it is basically minus 2 and this minus 2 minus 2j gets multiplied by this <coughs> j here so this is basically minus 2j minus 2j into j so this comes out to be equal to 2 minus 2j okay now let us consider <coughs> we had found out the circular convolution of these two signal uh, sequences in the previous question which was obtained as this 8 7 uh, 6 and 9 so we have y of n as x1 n circularly convolved with x2 n and we had obtained this as 8 7 6 9 <coughs> <coughs> so now let us find out what is <coughs> dft of this so we have yk as summation n running from 0 to 3 y n into minus j to the power k n so we have y of 0 is equal to y 0 plus y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3 which comes out to be 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 9 so this comes out to be 30 then y 1 is equal to y 0 into minus j to the power 0 which is 1 plus y1 into minus j to the power 1 plus y2 into minus j to the power <coughs> 2 plus y3 into minus j to the power 3 so this comes out to be 8 7 6 9 
minus 7j minus 6 <coughs> plus 9j so this is 8 minus 6 is 2 and 9 minus 7 is again 2 so 2 plus 2j then we have y2 is equal to y0 to the power uh, into minus g to the power 0 plus y1 into minus j to the power 2 plus y2 into minus j to the power 2 into 2 that is 4 plus y3 into minus j to the power 6. So this is equal to 8 minus 7 <coughs> plus 6 minus 9. So 8 minus 7 is minus 1 minus 1 uh, sorry plus 1 so this is 7 minus 9 which comes out to be minus 2 and then y3 is equal to y0 plus y1 into minus j to the power 3 plus y2 into minus j to the power 6 plus y3 into minus j to the power 9 so this comes out to be 8 plus 7j minus 6 minus 9j so this is equal to 8 minus 6 is 2 7 minus 9 is minus 2j so we have y of k is equal to 30 2 plus 2j minus 2 2 minus 2j. So if we observe this equation 1 and equation 2, we can say that y1 of k is equal to y of k, which means that verified circular convolution property of TFT. <coughs> Any questions at this point? Okay. If there are no further questions, I'll move on to the next next part the next question <coughs> okay so here we have been given two sequences so we have x1 n which is 1 2 3 0 and we have x2 n which is 1 3 2 1 and uh, they have said that x1 k and x2 k are a four point dft of the respective sequences and x3 n be a sequence obtained by taking i dft of this x3 k which is x1 k multiplied by x2 k and we need to find the value of x3 of 2 so what we know is this x3 k is equal to x1 k into x2 k and we need to find the value of small x3 of 2 so which may uh, and uh, <coughs> where this x3 of 2 is inverse dft of this x3 k now we know the circular convolution property of dft and we have also verified it in the previous question so this implies that this x3 of n is basically x1 of n circularly convolved with x2 of n okay and we need to find what is the value of x3 of 2 <coughs> so let us first write what is the formula for this x3 of n so this x3 of n is basically equal to summation let's say l running from 0 to n minus 1 which is 3 x1 of l x2 of 
n minus l and this is modulo 4 because our n is equal to 4 because these are 4 length sequences ok now x3 of n is something like this and we need to find x2 of n so this comes out to be summation l running from 0 to 3 x1 of l x2 of 2 minus l mod 4 ok yeah. so like the first question let us first draw some axis of this l let's say this is 0 1 and 3 let's say this is x1 of l so this x1 of l is basically 1 2 3 0 so it is 1 2 3 0 and now let us consider what is x2 of 2 minus l <coughs> okay it will be basically modulo 4 so this is 2 minus 0 so first thing that we have is x2 of 2 minus 0 that is 2 and x2 of 2 is equal to here 2 so we have a 2 here then we have here x2 of 1 so this is equal to 3 then we have x2 of 2 minus 2 that is 0 and x2 of 0 takes value 1 Hello, Hello madam. Yeah. Madam, uh, just, just one clarification. In the above step, it is x3 of x3 of 2, right? The above, uh, you written x2 of n is equal to just, can you, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It, it is x3 of 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> and we have x2 of minus 1, which is equal to x2 of 4 minus 1, which is x2 of 3. So, this x2 of 3 is equal to 1. Okay. So, x3 of 2 is pointwise multiplication of this and adding them. So, it is 2 into 1 which is 2 plus 3 into 2 is 6 plus 1 into 3 is 3. So, this comes out to be 11. So, this is the value of x3, 2. Any questions? <coughs> this was asked in uh, some gate. I don't remember the year but this was asked in gate. Okay. Let us look at the next <coughs> question. So what we have been given is x1 of n is a sequence and this x1 of n is constructed using another sequence, another n length sequence xn. So basically what we are doing is we are inserting two zeros between consecutive values of this xn. That's why what we have is x0 and after that we have two zeros, then x1, then two zeros and so on. We continue at the end we have x of n minus 1 and again two zeros. So we are constructing another sequence which is of length 3n. So with every value of xn, with every value of xn, I have now two zeros additional. So for every value we are having three uh, value like every value of xn we are having co corresponding three values so this x1 of n is now basically <coughs> 3n length sequence i hope this point is clear now another information that we have been given is this xn this xn has an n point dft has a n point dft as xk and now using this information we need to find the value of we need to find the value of x1 n 
Now this dft of x1n will be of uh, length 3n. So what we need to find is 3n point dft of x1n. Okay, so let us start by writing the formula of uh, <coughs> dft of x1n and let's say this is x1k. So what do we have is x1k is equal to summation n running from 0 to 3n minus 1 <coughs> x1n <coughs> into e power minus j 2 pi k n by 3n and this k takes the value as 0, 1, 2 and so on till 3n minus 1. Okay. Now let us make a substitution. So what we will do, we will substitute <coughs> substitute n by 3 or let's say m is equal to n by 3 which means that this n is equal to 3m and therefore this m this m now will be varying this n varies from 0 to 3n minus 1 so this m will be varying from 0 to 3n minus 1 by 3 which is equal to n minus 1 by 3 so the closest integer or the uh, nearest lowest integer to this is basically n minus 1 so this now m which is an integer will be taking uh, the value from 0 to n minus 1. So now I can write this as summation m running from 0 to n minus 1 x1 of 3m into e power minus j 2 pi k m by n. This factor is basically replaced by m okay now let us look at this sequence x1 of 3m so how does this x1 of 3m look so let's say y of n or let's say x tilde of m is equal to x1 of 3m so this x tilde of 0 will be equal to x1 of 0 which is equal to x of 0. Now x tilde of 1 will be equal to x1 of 3. Now if you observe carefully 0 this if you look here this is 0 1 2 and this is 3. So this is equal to x of 1. Similarly x tilde of 2 will be equal to x1 of 6 and at 6th location this is equal to x1 of uh, x of 2 and so on if I consider x tilde of 3n minus 1 so this is equal to x1 of n minus 1 which comes out to be <coughs> so this comes out to be x of n sorry so x of n minus 1 this is equal to x1 of 3n minus 3 and this is the location. So this is basically n, uh, 3n minus 1 location. This is 3n minus 2 and this is 3n minus 3. So x tilde of n minus 1 is equal to x of 3n uh, sorry x of n minus 1 and all the values after this are equal to 0. So this m anyway was varying from 0 to n minus 1. So this x so x1 of 3m, this x1 of 3m which I had replaced by x tilde m is exactly equal to the sequence which is x of n. So now I can replace this by x of m. So this is equal to x of m. So what do we have is summation m running from 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m 
into e power minus j to pi k m by n and this is equal to x of k but now now this <coughs> k is varying from 0 1 2 and so on till 3 n minus 1 okay so now let us look at this so what do we have is x1 k is equal to x k now this k is equal to 0 1 and so on till 3 n minus 1 now one thing we need to note is this x k this x k <coughs> this x k is basically n length sequence which means uh, actually it was n point dft of xn this is because this is n point dft of xn so when i so what will happen is after k equal to n minus 1 it will start repeating due to its modulo operation so this is basically this i can write as x of k mod n <coughs> so that i have repetition of it so this x1 of k is basically a sequence x of 0 x of 1 and so on till x of n minus 1 till this point it's okay after that we will be having x of n and x of n modulo n so x of n modulo n is equal to x of 0 so we have again x of 0 x of 1 and so on till x of n minus 1 and this is basically 2n minus 1th entry Again, after that we will be having x of 2n here that is x of 2n modulo n so this comes out to be again x of 0 so we will have x 0 and so on till x of n minus 1 and this is basically 3n minus 1th entry okay now if we observe carefully this is xk this is also xk and this is also xk so basically we had inserted two zeros or basically this x1 of n is equal to x uh, <coughs> x of n by 3 and that's why if i am having if i am inserting two zeros between the consecutive values its dft will repeat 2 plus 1 that is 3 times <coughs> So this x1 of k is basically xk repeated three times and this is 3n point dft of the given sequence. Any questions? <coughs> okay madam okay uh, just uh, one general question madam uh, sorry yes. i missed uh, the first uh, two questions okay. uh, in dft convolution means circular convolution am i right yes okay so in whenever we uh, we compute a dft and uh, the convolving means circular convolution yes so that is circular convolution is uh, same as uh, my um, yeah, uh, multiply, uh, multiplying DFTs and then taking inverse. Yes. Right. right. Both, yeah. So that is what we proved in the second problem, right? Yes, yes. In the okay. first question, we found out the DFT. So I okay. Just, uh, just a circular uh, convolution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just a uh, <laughs> circular convolution. Can you uh, suggest a simple technique, madam? I have been, uh, uh, you know, seeing several books, some matrix uh, method, and which is the best? Uh, can you just illustrate once again a circular convolution? How uh, I just want to remember the method. Yeah. There uh, are 
various ways of doing it actually like some people will draw an axis something like this then create a reference sequence using the modulo n operation that is x2 of minus k and then we'll have a circular shift of everything like this one will go here the zero will go here and so on there is a matrix method also right there is a matrix method also you can do it in that way also whichever is convenient to you okay yeah so in matrix method what they do like we are having this is the sequence that we are this is x1 n so we, yes. are, we actually need four values right so yes. we'll have this x1 n let's say it is 1 2 3 4 and then we'll arrange these in matrix form that is this first it will get multiplied with this right this one is one is getting multiplied by one so it will be basically one zero one one then for one it gets multiplied by one one zero one so it will be one one zero one then one 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 zero one 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 zero and then zero one 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 and then what you whatever you will get will be again this one cross four matrix which will be equal to eight seven six and nine <coughs> so again in this what you can do you can first uh, get the first column and then have a circular shift of everything like just shift this to uh, this position this here like this and this will go to this position so this circular shift you can have in your matrix uh, matrix method matrix method just multiplication where 88769 is the is the answer right for yeah. search convolution yes yes just do so, a matrix multiplication it's just a matrix multiplication <laughs> that looks simple to me and uh, the the way you formed the matrix hmm. using uh, x to n also hmm. looks simple you start with let us think of rows you started with 1110 then uh, you have a uh, uh, last one first zero one 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 and then uh, yeah and then again circular one zero one 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 zero one one and then um, just matrix multiplication you get eight seven six nine yes okay. now uh, this is a simple one 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 signal but you just verify whatever you said uh, using some complicated sequence which is not symmetric and uh, instead of looking at rows it will be better if you look at the columns because this is this thing is getting multiplied like this okay yeah okay <coughs> okay like actually this this column is my x2 of 1 minus k uh, sorry oh. x2 of minus k okay this column is x2 of 1 minus k this is yeah. x2 of 2 minus k and this one is x2 of 3 minus k and this is x2 uh, x1 of k okay. yes <coughs> yes okay okay man yeah. yeah. i'll 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 check okay any questions in this part Okay, so if not, then we'll use this property to solve the next question. This was also asked in Sangeet. I should have mentioned the year. Anyways, so what we have been given is, so we have a four-point sequence. This is Xn and it's DFT, four-point DFT is given to us. So Xn is 3, 2, 3, 4. <coughs> and Xk is 12. 2j 0 minus 2j this is given to us and now what we need to do is we need to find dft of the sequence x1 n which is given like this and we need to, uh, it is basically x1 k and we need to find this ratio okay now this is basically 3 this 3 then two zeros added to it uh, inserted between two values this is 2, then again I have 2 zeros, then 3, again 2 zeros, and then 4, again 2 zeros. So this is similar setup of what we had in this question. So it is exactly the same with n is equal to 4. Huh, 
Uh, yes, madam. Uh, just to go go back to the uh, uh, problem description, the question five. Here, x n is given three two three four, and again, why x of k is given? X of k we can derive from x of n, right? D of t. Yes, you can find it. But why it is given in the problem? Because it is a gate question, and in gate question, you don't have time. A lot of time. So this question itself is formed like this: that you have the x k. Okay. You have the x k, so use that x k to find your x one of k. Okay. Okay. Don't rework x one of k from the first principles. Okay. So that okay. is the motive of this. Okay. Okay. You can do it. You can uh, take that x one n and again find out what is x one of uh, k using the first principles. You will get same answer. Okay. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so this is exactly the setup that we are having here, <coughs> and uh, so we had seen that uh, this if I insert two zeros after every value, then this x one of k will be repeated version of this x one x k. So this x one of k is basically repeat this x k three times. So this is twelve comma two j comma zero comma minus two j. Then again, I'll repeat it one more time. That is twelve two j zero minus two j. Then twelve two j zero minus two j. Now this is my zeroth index. This is one two three four five six seven eight nine. Ten and eleven. So what do we have is <coughs> x one of eleven. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, x one of eleven is equal to minus two j, and x one of eight is equal to twelve. So this is x one of eight, and this is x one of eleven. So what we need to find is magnitude of x one of eleven upon x one of eight. Is equal to sorry, suppose it. Yeah, so we need to find magnitude of x one of eight upon x one of eleven. This comes out to be twelve upon minus two j, which is equal to magnitude of six j, which is equal to six. I hope this part is clear. So let's look at the next question. So what do we have here is uh, <coughs> this x k is given as k plus one. So this x k sequence I can write as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is basically eight point D F T, and this starts from zero, and it is a DFT of a sequence x n, and we need to find the value of summation n equal to zero to three x of two n. <coughs> so what we know is x n. We can find out as one by n summation n equal to zero to n minus one x k into w eight. <coughs> Power minus k n. Okay. Now, <coughs> another thing that we know here is this x k sequence. Now, finding all the eight values, or let's say the four values, and then uh, adding them up is a bit tedious task. So, what we'll do is we'll try to look at this w eight factor. But before that, what we'll do? Ah, uh, just, madam. Uh, the W eight notation is it uh, 
minus k n or plus k n minus k n okay w8 is e power minus j 2 pi by n so it is defined that way okay okay right yeah it is defined that way so uh, yeah so this xk i can write as summation n running from 0 to n minus 1 <coughs> xn into w8 to the power kn okay now let us look at this factor w8 so this w8 is equal to e power minus j 2 pi this n is equal to 8 by 8 this is equal to e power minus j pi by 4 okay <coughs> now let us consider uh, x0 so if i do that this k value here is equal to 0 so this goes to 1 that is w8 to the power 0 will be equal to 1 so this i can write as summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 xl this is the first equation that i have now look at this factor W eight to the power four into n. So this I can write as e power minus j pi by four into four n, which is equal to e power minus j pi n, which is equal to minus one to the power n. So what I am doing here is I am basically considering W eight k n evaluated at k equal to four. okay so if i so by using this what we have obtained if i consider x4 <coughs> so this i can write as summation n running from 0 to n minus 1 xn into w8 4n which i can write as summation n running from 0 to n minus 1 Minus one to the power n, x n. This is my second equation. Any questions till this point? Uh, madam, uh, why are you framing that equation x sub four? What was uh, your reasoning? I'll show that. Just okay. look at what we need to find. We need to find this. Okay. Yes, x sub two n. We have to find. Yeah. That, that so, means the uh, x sub. Uh, capital X of two n. We need to. No. No, no, no. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let this. Let say this sum is s. So this s I can write as x zero plus x two yes, plus x four right. plus x six. Uh, okay. Yes. Let's but uh, but you skipped X of two. Where? Okay, okay. Uh, sir, okay. this is small x. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. This is not TFT. This is in time domain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, madam. Go ahead. Yeah. So you consider this e first equation, that is x zero is basically summation of all the x n's. That is, <coughs> I can write it as x zero plus x one plus x two plus x three plus x four plus x five. Plus x six plus x seven, and this x of four is basically minus one to the power n into x n. So this I this is equal to x zero here n equal to one so minus one to the power so I, at all the odd indices I'll have a negative sign and for all the even I'll have a positive sign. So this I can write as minus x one plus x two. Minus x three plus x four minus x five plus x six minus x seven. Now, <coughs> can we try to uh, get this s or some function of s using these two? So what we can do is we can simply add these two. So what we'll do, we'll consider x zero plus x four 
so this comes out to be 2 times x0 plus 2 times x2 plus 2 times x4 plus 2 times x6 so this is basically 2 times s the summation s and uh, therefore this s is equal to x0 plus x4 by 2 and the value of x0 is equal to 1 and the value of x4 is equal to 5 so this i can write as 1 plus 5 by 2 which is equal to 6 by 2 which is equal to 3 i hope this is clear any questions <coughs> okay madam i understand yeah okay so many times in competitive exams this tft questions look a bit tedious but they are not they are framed in such a way that it reduces to very simple form which is something like this another way of doing this was first find out this xn find out this xn using the idft formula that is this formula here and then uh, take uh, what is uh, your x2, uh, x0, x2, x4 and x6 and simply add them. But that would have taken a lot more time compared to this way. So many times we can go for some simpler uh, ways in order to find this. Okay, let us go ahead and look at the <coughs> next question. So in this question what we will do, we will verify the Parseval's relation for the dft using this sequence which is xn okay so basically what is your parseval's relation so this parseval's relation is given as i have this summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 magnitude xn square this is equal to 1 by n summation k running from 0 to n minus 1 magnitude of xk square so this is my parseval's relation for dft what do we have as xn so this xn is equal to 1 2 3 4 so if i consider lhs so this is four point <coughs> so here basically my n is equal to 4 so this lhs is equal to summation n equal to 0 to 3 magnitude of xn square which is equal to 1 plus 2 square that is 4 plus 3 square that is 9 plus 4 square that is 16 and if we solve this this comes out to be equal to 30 so uh, 1 plus 9 10 4 plus 16 20 so 10 plus 20 is equal to <coughs> and now next for RHS we have XK we had found out the TFT of this in question 2 yeah this is what we had obtained for the signal X1 N 1 2 3 4 and it was 10 minus 2 plus 2 J minus 2 comma minus 2 comma uh, minus 2 minus 2 J so this we had obtained so let us use the same thing so this x1 k was equal to <coughs> yeah. 10 minus 2 plus 2 j minus 2 and minus 2 minus 2 j Okay, so now let us consider 1 by n which is equal to 4 summation k running from 0 to 3 xk ma magnitude xk square. So this is equal to 1 by 4 inside the bracket I have 10 square plus magnitude of minus 2 plus 2j square plus minus 2 square plus magnitude of minus 2 yeah, minus 2 minus 2 j square so this I can write as 1 by 4 100 so magnitude of 
minus 2 plus 2j square is equal to 4 that is 2 square plus 2 square 4 which is equal to 8 so this is equal to plus 8 2 square is 4 this is again minus this is also equal to magnitude of minus 2 minus 2j square so this comes out to be equal to <coughs> plus 8 so this is 1 by 4 into 120 this comes out to be equal to 30 so if we look at this value here and this value here what do we have in both the cases is 1 by 4 summation k running from 0 to 3 magnitude x k square is equal to summation n running from 0 to 3 magnitude x n square any questions? Okay. If not, then let us look at the next question. So what we have been given is, in question 2, we have found out uh, 4 point DFT of this sequence, that is xn equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, which was obtained something like this. Now what will happen if we consider 6 point DFT and uh, 2 point DFT? So what will happen if we consider 6 point DFT and 2 point DFT and can we ha take 6 point DFT and can we take 2 point DFT of Excel? Uh, madam, uh, the given sequence is a 4 point DFT. Yeah. 6 point means simply pair the zeros, two zeros. Yes. And 2 point means uh, remove the last two, one comma two. La uh, remove and pad zeros to what? No. I understand 6 point DFT means uh, extending by padding with 0, 0, right? Extending what? Xn uh, or XN. Xk? Uh, Xn. Okay, then fine. Yeah. Okay. And the 2 point DFT means uh, uh, ignore the last two. Yes. Uh, X of n is equal to 1, comma 2 only. That yes. is 2. Okay. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll first consider 2 point DFT and then look at uh, 1 point DFT. So let's start with 2 point DFT first. So what we are doing actually is we have this xk formula, right, which is equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 xn into e power minus j 2 pi k n by n. So here n is equal to 2 which means that this xk is equal to summation n running from 0 to n minus 1 that is 1 xn <coughs> and this factor e power minus j 2 pi k n by 2 so this reduces to minus 1 to the power k n to minus 1 to the power k n ok so now if I am having n equal to 2, my k will be equal to 0 and 1. After that it will start repeating. So I have x0 is equal to summation or rather this I can write as x0 into minus 1 to the power 0 plus x1. So this comes out to be equal to 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3 and x1 is equal to x0 minus x1 so this comes out to be 1 minus 2 which is equal to minus 1 <coughs> till this point it's all a valid operation now let us try to reconstruct back the signal so let's say this x2 of n is idft of 2 point dft of xn so this x2 of n is 1 by n summation k running from 0 to 1 xk this, <coughs> this 
this w this was w2 so basically w2 to the power minus 1 so this will be minus 1 to the power minus k n so this is equal to 1 by 2 inside the bracket x k plus minus 1 to the power minus k n rather yeah minus n <coughs> into x 1 this is 0 okay so x2 of 0 is equal to 1 by 2 inside the bracket this is 3 okay, let me write it here 1 by 2 x0 is 3 plus minus 1 to the power minus n into minus 1 okay 3 minus 1 which is equal to 1 by 2 3 minus 1 which is equal uh, 1 by 2 3 minus 1 is 2 that is equal to 1 and x2 of 1 is equal to 1 by 2 inside the bracket it will be 3 plus 1 which comes out to be equal to 2 and after that I can't find any value after that I don't know uh, how to find what is x2 of 3 <laughs> Madam, yeah. Uh, what was your thinking? Why we are, you have to compute IDFT? Uh, if you look at the question, he has given a. We have found a four point DFT of X n. What will happen if we consider two point DFT? So it fairly it is intuitive. As I said, it is nothing but uh, uh, one comma two. But you have found out uh, again uh, through a circular route of uh, converting uh, from IDFT again to uh, DFT, then IDFT, and then proving. Uh, okay, is, it, is your x2 of n equal to x of n? Is uh, x2 of n is equal to x of... No, it can't be. It can't be because... Uh, you see, what is given is a four-point uh, sequence: x of n, one comma two comma three comma four. Yes. Okay. So, uh, for a four-point uh, uh, time sequence, the DFT also four-point. So, when you remove, uh, when you make it two-point, uh, you 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 cut off the last two points. <laughs> That, that looks intuitive to me, but the, you found the same thing again through circular route. Circular route? I didn't understand circular route. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. No, where I'm coming from is that what we, the question is what will happen if you consider two point DFT? So, so if you can. Your question is why I'm finding IDFT. Ah, why you're going through IDFT? By looking at the question itself, I am uh, guessing it, it is a uh, one comma two. It's fine. What I'm trying to say is my if I take two point DFT and yeah. again convert it back in time domain, whatever I'm getting is not equal to my original signal. Yes, it is equivalent to original signal one comma two, right? No, my XN. What was my XN? My XN was one, two, three, four. Oh yes, it is not original. It is uh, it is original signal with uh, uh, last two uh, last two chopped off. Okay, uh, four, four two points chopped off, right? Yeah. Okay. What I'm trying to say all is, suppose hmm. I am having a situation that I need to process uh, an audio signal. Yes. Okay. Now my audio signal is of length thousand. Yes. And now you to interpret its frequency domain representation. Yes. Your FFT is basically a discrete version. FFT is computable in your system. Yes. Your DTFT was not computable. Yes. Now this voice signal I need to interpret in frequency domain. What is the minimum value of N I should choose? Is it possible to analyze that frequency domain representation of that exact signal if I consider a 500 point TFT? 
Okay. No. Okay. What is, what will happen if I consider thousand point DFT? Yes, I can ob observe. I can observe something. I can get some proper information. But if I take five hundred point DFT, I would be able to understand anything because basically I am not finding the DFT of my original signal. I am finding a DFT of uh, literally a five hundred point sequence. Okay. So what you are saying is XN was actually like what I found out was basically DFT of only two length sequence, which is one and two. Yes. And when I take IDFT, I'll again get those two points only. But what my yes. aim was, my aim was to find DFT of one two three four. Yes. So if I take my signal as one two three four, which is four length, and then compute its two point DFT. Yes. So uh, basically, I am not observing the frequency domain representation of my original signal. I am observing frequency domain representation of some another signal. Yes. So this actually no knowledge of uh, or rather choice of n is very critical when I am actually analyzing some system or some signal. Uh, when I am practically when I have to do some practical opera uh, operations or some practical analysis. So this choice of n is critical. That I want to show here. Yes. So if if we want to preserve the characteristics, we we cannot uh, reduce the sequence. Yes. Uh, yes, we cannot reduce the sequence. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So when I am doing this, I am just I am just able to recover back two points of my original signal. What happened to another other remaining points? I can't get any information of it. Okay. Nothing I'll get. Rather, this x two of n. If I use the same formula, this which I had written, I have written here. This will be again one, and x two of three will be again equal to two. I literally yeah. get a sequence one two one two. Which yeah. Not equal to my original sequence. Yeah, but normally, if any sequence <coughs> is given, a finite sequence. Of uh, length, uh, say let, let us say length of six. We yeah. always compute DFT of uh, six point DFT, right? No. No, need not be. Need not be. I can compute one zero two four point DFT for the six length sequence. It's fine. Okay. Okay. But if I so, compute a five point DFT, I am losing on to the information. Okay. This two point DFT is a valid operation, but it okay. it gives no information to me. Okay. So, getting some meaningful information using these operations. Uh huh. So, for that, I need to have my value of n at least equal to four. At, at least. least. At least equal to the size of the original time signal. Correct. Correct. Okay. 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 So that's, that's why I consider two different cases. The first case is two point DFT, and the second case is six point DFT. Okay. So okay. when I oh. find out six point DFT, you will see that. Uh, I am able to recover back my original signal. Okay, so not only six <coughs> point. If you take eight point, you will be able, should be able to recover back. Yes, you right? take one zero two four point DFT. You will get back your original signal as long as n is greater than the length of your signal. It's fine. Okay, okay, madam, got it. Yeah. So <coughs> basically, what we observed here is my x two of n. Is not equal to x n, which means no information. From two point DFT, and in fact, if we consider higher uh, points, like if I consider a one zero two four point DFT, will actually start up uh, approaching its TTFT. So if we look here, your relation with uh, <coughs> this x of omega, uh, this x k with your omega, right? X k is basically equal to x of omega at omega equal to two pi uh, two pi k n. So what actually is happening is this is suppose my omega axis and this is minus pi two pi. So I am simply discretizing this in n parts. Or let's say it is from zero to two pi. So this is k equal to zero, 
k equal to 1 and so on and this is my k equal to n minus 1 so I'm actually discretizing my 2 pi in n discrete intervals n points so if my n tends to infinity this this duration will go to 0 this interval will be very small very negligible this difference between two consecutive points will be very small and then I'll again get back to my DTFT okay yeah so if I have a large number of FFT points I'm somewhat trying to uh, understand how its DTFT will be okay that means almost like continuous we are going yeah right? yeah it's not yeah. continuous but it will resemble something like that yeah, large num large number of values. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. 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 Got it. <laughs> yeah. So the entire point of uh, showing this example was to show that if I consider n less than my sequence length, <laughs> we can't get any information. I need to have it at least equal to n equal to four. We know that. And this is a valid TFT, but if I consider n greater than 4 and less than 4, what happens? That I am trying to explain here. So, for that, let us now consider 6 point DFT. So, let us consider now, even 5 point DFT, we should be able to recover. Yes, yes. <coughs> so, this 6 point DFT, so this W6. I can write as e power minus j 2 pi by 6 which is equal to e power minus j pi by 3. So <coughs> let's say this x6 of k is equal to summation <coughs> n running from 0 to n minus 1 xn into e power minus j pi by 3 kn. So <coughs> So if we simplify this, since we have solved a lot of times the same thing, I will not repeat finding TFT here, but if you simplify this, I get a 6 point sequence is equal to 10 minus 3.5 minus 4.33j. comma 2.5 is 0 0.866 j comma minus 2 comma 2.5 minus 0 0.6 I'm sorry 866 j comma minus 3.5 plus 4.33 j so this is the sequence six point sequence that we will obtain do you want me to solve it uh, ma madam, here, since the original sequence is only <coughs> 4, uh, you are using a modulo. Uh, how are you getting a... Uh, when you uh, need to find 6, six point DFT, you need to make your signal of length 6. So that uh, I will do, do by appending two zeros. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, ma'am. Do you want me to solve this in detail? No, 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 madam. Go ahead. We understand. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Then what we'll do is we'll try to find what is x x6 of n, which is equal to 1 by 6 summation k running from 0 to 5 xk. <coughs> <coughs> into e power j pi by 3 kn now similar to the previous thing this thing what will happen is this x6 of n will basically come out to be 1 2 3 4 0 0 which was basically xn after appending two zeros so now what we can see is this was my signal of interest and these are some additional zeros which I actually don't need so I can just neglect those but this was my original xn and I can just uh, remove the appended zeros and get back my xn so here x6 of n 
for n equal to 0 to 3 is exactly equal to xn which means that I can recover back xn if I take 6 point dft <coughs> by taking idft yes yeah generally uh, that means the moral of the story is uh, uh, whenever we want to recover the signal back uh, from uh, dft the the point sequence of dft we have to take greater than or equal to the length of the sequence yes not only that if i am taking the value of n which is less than my length of sequence i am actually not finding frequency domain representation of that sequence i am finding frequency domain representation of some other sequence uh, which is basically some smaller length sequence that is if i take n equal to 3 then i'll just find the dft of these two so basically the signal is 1 to 3 Yes, yes. Okay, that looks fairly intuitive <coughs> to me because uh, you, you wanted to compromise. That means you are ignoring the original, uh, uh, the additional uh, uh, sequences in the original signal itself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But when you are processing something like there might be some medical images, uh, medical signals like ECG, EEG, those okay. signals. But uh, so we need uh, very precise information about frequency domain. Like we need. Uh, it's very crucial to process those signals. So in that, okay. we need to be very critical in selecting the value of n, which should be at least equal to my length of sequence. But uh, uh, it can be more. Uh, it can be more. It can how be la more. How large you can take? Any actually. any large value you can take, as long yeah. as your system supports. Okay. Yeah. But, it, but it is meaningless anywhere, right? It's meaningless. Uh, it may not be meaningless because... Uh, <coughs> basically when you are discretizing your 0 to 2 pi uh, so you are suppose I have uh, uh, okay we are discretizing to 0 to 2 pi but I have only 4 numbers the remaining all 0 0 0 see if I have 2 value uh, 2 point suppose so, suppose I have a 2 length sequence and I have yeah. 2 point dft so this is 0 and this is pi yes if I take 4 point dft it will be 0 pi by 2 and pi by uh, 3 pi by 2 this information yeah. was not available when i took uh, 2 point uh, dft but i am getting some new information which was at pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 okay, okay. so based on situation the uh, amount of precision that you want uh, and the uh, like resolution of the frequencies that you need to look at based on that you can take the value of your n <coughs> Yeah. Okay, okay, I got it. I got yeah. it. it will be very application specific. Okay. Okay. So if that is clear, let us look at to the next question. So here we have xn equal to cos to pi point one n and here n is varying from zero to nine. So, if my n is varying from 0 to 9, my xn is basically 10 length sequence. <coughs> okay. And it is actually 0 otherwise. I forgot to mention it. Okay. Then, now just consider this cos of 2 pi n. Without this condition. If it is for all n, then this is periodic with period 2 pi by <coughs> this omega that is 2 pi into 0.1 which is equal to 10. So this is the period of uh, cos of 2 pi 0.1 n okay and this is periodic now if a signal is periodic with period 10 i can find its fourier series coefficients another property of dft is if i consider any signal xn to be periodic with period n 
if it is periodic with period n or let's say it can be repeated after or extended to uh, repeat it after a hello yeah uh, yes madam so the current problem is anyway is a periodic with the period n right no n equal to 0 to 9 and it is zero otherwise oh okay so it is uh, a periodic okay it is okay <coughs> Okay, okay, it's not periodic. Okay. It's a finite length sequence. Okay, okay. From 0 to 9. Okay. So it's okay. basically a 10 length sequence. So we have to find DFT of this finite length sequence. Yes. So instead of using my DFT formula, what I can do, I can use the property of uh, or the relation of DFT with uh, DFS, that is discrete Fourier series. We know that XK is equal to N times CK. Okay. We have this property. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, relation with discrete Fourier series, we have this property that is xk is n times ck. Okay. So we know how we can handle this cos when it is periodic. Right. It's very easy to handle okay. if it is periodic. We know that I can write it as e power j 2 pi 0 0.1 n plus e power minus j 2 pi 0 0.1 n by 2. So basically this I can write as 1 by 2 into e power j 2 pi 0 0.1 n plus 1 by 2 into e power j 2 pi 0 0.1 n with a minus sign and basically this part 2 pi <coughs> into 0 0.1 is my omega naught so this is e power j omega naught 1 n and this is e power j omega naught into minus 1 n so this 1 by 2 is c k and this 1 by 2 is c of minus k now this DFT of uh, any discrete, uh, sorry, discrete Fourier series of any periodic signal is periodic in nature. So I can also write this as C times minus K modulo N, which is equal to C of N minus K. So basically here K is equal to 1. This is C1 and this is C of minus 1 and this is C of N minus 1, which is N is equal to 10. So this is C of 9. Now, using this property that we have, we can write x of 1 as c1 into 10, which is equal to 10 by 2, <coughs> which is equal to 5, and x9 is equal to 10 by 2, which is equal to 10 into c9. And it will be 0 otherwise. So my xk is equal to 5 for k equal to 1 and 9 is equal to 0 otherwise. Is it okay? Okay. Okay, but uh, okay, okay, but we, we can also do D, uh, find out D, DFT by preparing a, 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 a 10 length sequence of XN, right? Yes. Uh, that, that is a brute force method, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Simply writing XN is equal to zero or whatever, whatever is a 10 length sequence. Yes. Okay, okay. we get the same answer. Okay, we'll madam. <coughs> okay now let us look at the last question so suppose we need to find response of an LTI system with L length impulse response using n point DFT tool if input can be of maximum length of M what is the minimum value of N that we can use so where is this all where all uh, from where is this question coming out is so <coughs> <coughs> basically 
I have an LTI system here. And let's say its impulse response is HN. And I have a signal XN. And let's say I have YN. And this YN is basically XN convolved with HN. So this is linear convolution. Okay, now if I need to find, <coughs> if I need to find this convolution, this convolution using my systems, my computer systems, so I, uh, so what basically I need to do is I need to find this linear convolution. And we know that this convolution is a very tedious operation like we need to first flip shift multiply add and it is very complicated and uh, that program has a higher complexity but we know that this y of omega in frequency domain is simply multiplication <coughs> okay now another thing that we know is the relation of yk which is my dft of this signal yn which is equal to x of is equal to y of omega evaluated at omega equal to 2 pi k by n okay but we don't know how what value of n we should choose now I need to find <coughs> this convolution using my systems so the using <coughs> this multiplication or a convolution property of DFT but to my uh, the tool that I have in hand while processing in my systems is only DFT I can't use DTFT I can't find DTFT okay so for that <coughs> what I have is basically y of k which is equal to x k into h k this i can find using my processors or some uh, processing unit let's say processors okay now this is endpoint dft and if i take its time domain then this will be equal to let's say it's y tilde n is equal to x of n circularly convolved with h of n so this is circular convolution I don't I can't find this using processors I can find this but the time domain representation of uh, this DFT multiplication is circular convolution but if I need to process it with the help of DFT what my aim is I need to have y n should be equal to y tilde n this is what we want till this point is it clear no no madam so getting confused okay uh, let me start it from uh, start it from zero okay so uh, yeah okay let me start it what we have been given is an LTI system okay yes we have this LTI system let's say it's impulse response is HN okay. yeah. now an input to the system is XN yes uh, and let's say its output is YN what is YN how do you uh, find out YN yeah XN uh, why you are saying linear it can be circular right this why? is a 
This is an LTI system. Oh, okay, okay, pure LTI system. Yes. This is an LTI system. Yes. So, how do we find out the output yeah. of any LTI system? That is convolution, linear yeah, convolution. Yeah, exactly. So, this is XL linearly convolved with HL. So, this is linear convolution. Yes, but also is given that uh, the length of the impulse response is L, right? Yeah. This is of length L. This is of length yes. M. Uh, length M, M, yes, <coughs> that is given, yes. Okay, till this point it's clear. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, do you have any idea what will be the length of Y N? Um, it will be something like uh, M plus L, some more than M plus L. This oh. will be M plus L like minus L one. Minus. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So y of n will be of length m plus l minus 1. Till this point it's clear? Yes, madam. Okay. Now we know that uh, convolution is a complicated operation. If my m is 100, my l is 100 or my m is 1000, l is 1000, it's very high complexity thing because we are having four operations in it. Flip, shift, multiply, yes. add. So these are very complex operations. Yes. So right. generally, what we understand is, uh, we, instead of doing a convolution, we actually convert to frequency domain and uh, multiply and then do inverse. Correct. Inverse Correct. Mm. So basically, what we do is, we find its DTFT. Yes. So we find out Y of omega and that is equal to X of omega into H of omega and then we take its IDTFT and we get y of n okay this much is clear <coughs> no uh, y dtft directly we can find uh, uh, for your trans you capital y of capital y of k no right okay suppose let me come to that point if in normal case, which is your first transform that you found out or which relates linear convolution to frequency domain? Linear convolution to frequency, frequency domain. Yes, so that is, uh, that is, uh, yeah, uh, that you are talking about the continuous signals. No, discrete, Dis discrete. Discrete. That is, uh, that is uh, DT. Uh, DTFT, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. So your linear yeah. convolution will get converted to multiplication only when I am finding DTFT. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this what I have written, like find DTFT, y of omega equal to x of omega into h of omega and get back, <coughs> find its inverse and I will get back yn. Okay, okay, no, no, why my mind, the y of k is popping up, is it is wrong, right? y of k is... Y of K, we we refer to capital Y of K means what? Is it not uh, D? It is DFT, yeah. Yeah. Cap yeah. Oh, it is not DTFT. It is no, DFT. No, it's capital. DFT. Okay. 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 This Y of K is DFT. Oh, okay. 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 I got it, man. And so DTFT is a continuous. Uh, that's why you use omega there. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes, yes. I got, I got it. So, sorry. So, I am just uh, refreshing my fundamentals. Yes. Yeah, okay. No problem. So, till okay, this point, it's clear? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, what tool I have is DFT. I can use only DFT in my computers. <coughs> yes. This can't compute. Yes. Because it is a continuous, uh, you cannot uh, compute easily. So... We have storage to issues. convert it to infinite values. Right. Yeah, you have to convert it to some nearest to DFT. Yeah, wait, wait. Okay. Wait. The tool that I have in my hand is DFT. Okay. So an equivalent operation of this y of omega equal to x omega into h of omega, I can write equivalently what I can find. I can find yk, xk or rather let me say I can find I have xn 
I can find xn <coughs> n point dft as xk I have hn n point dft hk and then I can find yk is equal to xk hk till this point is it okay yes sir that is completely in dft domain yes that makes sense okay now this is in frequency domain now if yes. i convert this back like if i take idft and let's say it is y tilde of n what oh. will be equal to okay so right now we are in completely dft we are trying to map that uh, dft1 to id equivalent id <coughs> DFT. yes what okay. will be, okay this is multiplication of two dfts what will be that in time domain uh, that is convolution which convolution uh, because it because it is dft it is circular convolution correct yeah. so this will be xn circularly convolved with hn yes okay now what i want to find is i want yn i am getting y tilde of n yes so i need to find n this n this n such that y tilde n is equal to yn correct y tilde n is equal to yn okay i got it yes <coughs> what is the length of yn length of yn is given as uh, as yeah, M plus L minus. This one. Yes. Okay. And what is the length of your uh, y tilde n? Y tilde n. That is also. Yeah. I don't. <coughs> I am taking n point DFT of uh, this xn. Oh, okay. So it is uh, both xk and hk are n point DFT. Yes. Then the length will be 2n plus 1. Na? I don't know. No, it is n only. Correct. Right? It will be n. Uh, because circular convolution. Do... So, yes. yeah, 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 I got it. So, in a, in a, in a circular uh, convolution and uh, the, uh, the, the length of... Uh, the length doesn't change, right? It is the same. Yes. Circular convolution. Um, yeah. X of n, circular convolve y of n. If each is of length n, uh, the convolved, uh, circular convolved uh, signal also of length n. Okay. Yes, that is correct. a property. Correct. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yes. So my y tilde of n is n length sequence. My y of n should be, uh, is m plus n minus 1 length sequence. Yes, yes. So for these two to be equal, this should be, n should be equal to m plus l minus 1. Yes. So this is the value of n that I want. Okay, that minimum, minimum is m plus l minus 1. Yes. So, now so that, that is, <coughs> sorry? Is that the answer? Yes. Okay. Let us see if it is okay. Suppose my hn, is uh, simply a two length sequence one one and my xn is let's say again a two length sequence one two i'm taking very simple values so this is two length so my l is equal to two my m is equal to two so what should be the value of my <coughs> <coughs> so uh, y of n is equal to xn linearly convolved with hn so this will be having length of uh, 2 plus 2 minus 1 which is equal to 3 is it okay yes now let us try to find what is yn yes okay so i have <coughs> yn will be a three length sequence so this yn is basically summation of hn xk this is k h of n minus k right yes linear convolution 
from minus infinity to infinity yes then uh, if i consider x k Let's say zero, one, two, three, four, and this is minus two, minus one. My x k is one, two. Fine. Now let me have h of minus k. It will be one and one here, like this. Is it okay? This is my k axis. Yeah. Yes. Yes. H of k, h of minus k. You are flipping h yes. of yeah. Okay. okay. So this will give me my y zero. Okay. Which will be multiplication of these two, which is one. Then h of one minus k will be. I'll just shift it by one value. This will give me one into one plus two into one. Yes. So y one will be equal to <coughs> three. And then yes. I have h of two minus k. That will be equal to one one. So y of two will be equal to this two multiplied by one, which is equal to two. Now if yeah. I shift it further, h of three minus k. If I do that, and this will be one one. This is zero. So now there is no overlap. Means from uh, n equal to three, it will be all zero. So this y of n is equal to one three. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. So this was my linear convolution. This is what I want. Yes. Now let me consider two point uh, circular convolution, like circular convolution of this H n one one and one two, and uh, let us consider n equal to two. So suppose I have n equal to two, then y one n. Which is equal to x one n circularly convolved with x two n. This will be of length two. Yes. Right. <coughs> Sorry. This is x n circularly convolved with h n. This will be a two length sequence. What was my x n? So let me do it here. This is my k. So my x k. This is zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. My x k is one two. And now let me consider h of minus k. So this h of minus k will be modulo two operation. Yes. So if it this this is modulo two operation. So now this h of minus k. So if I consider h of uh, k equal to zero, so it will be h zero, which is equal to one. <coughs> And <coughs> again, it, this will be h of minus one, which will be h of two minus one, which is equal to h one, which is again one here. So my y one of zero will be equal to one into one plus two into one, which is equal to three. Now, if I shift it by one, we need to find two length sequence. So this n will be varying from zero to one. So now this one will go here, and this one will go here. So we have it like this. So again, x y one of <coughs> one is equal to one into one plus one into two, which is equal to three. So y one of n is a two length sequence, three comma three, and this is not equal to my y n. Yes. Now let me consider n equal to three. <coughs> Now I have n equal to three. Okay. So for if I have n equal to three, I can write my x n as is one two. So I can append one zero. Similarly, my x n is. One one zero. Okay, so because I need to find n length, uh, the signal length should be equal to n, which is equal to three. So I'll append zeros to it. So this is zero one two three. My x k is 
1 2 0 now let me consider h of minus k so first thing here it will be h of 0 which is equal to 1 then here I'll have h of minus 1 which is h of minus k is basically equal to h of n minus k which is equal to h of 3 minus k so this will be equal to h of 2 and h of 2 is equal to 0 and this is h of minus 2 which is equal to h of 1 and h1 is equal to 1 so this y of 1 let's say y 2 of 1 is 1 into 1 which is equal to 1 here okay <coughs> then I have h of 1 minus k use another color h of 1 minus k so this is h of 1 which is equal to 1 then I'll have h of 0 which is equal to 1 and then I'll have h of minus 1 which is equal to 0 this 0 goes here so this y2 of y2 of 1 is equal to 1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 which is equal to 3 then I'll find h of 2 minus k so here I have h of 2 then I'll have h of 1 and then I'll have h of 0 h of 2 is equal to <coughs> 0 h of 1 is 1 and h of 2 is uh, sorry h of 0 is 1 so this comes out to be 0 into 1 1 into 2 is 2 and 1 into 0 so this y2 of 2 comes out to be equal to 2 so this y2 of n is equal to 1 3 so that is equal to this yn which is linear convolution yes okay so if i set the value of n as uh, l plus m minus 1 then i live and then i am able to get <coughs> same thing yes i got it okay So this is equal to my yn. I hope this is fine and this was the last question that I had planned to cover today. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Okay, okay. thank you madam. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> madam, uh, this is the first time I am doing an electronics engineering course. I was basically a mechanical engineer and uh, IT engineer by profession. Okay. I'm doing that, so it's very exciting. So <laughs> completely online. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you.